Hey y'all, Ramdino here, coming at you again for another Appalachian Trail community news, through hiker update, and trail information. Happy Easter, he is risen. Well, there is a lot of stuff going on in the woods right now. Leaves are popping out everywhere. Our view through the woods is getting to be pretty diminished. Kind of hard to see them bears and cougars coming uh, out there on the trail. So listen up while you're out there. Well, let's get on with what's going on with the through hikers that are going out there on the trail. So the bubble is moving north at a pretty good pace. Still got people leaving down at Amicola Falls State Park and Springer. Those are diminishing considerably. We're somewhere around 2,250 that have left so far. So each day now, uh, even through into May, we'll be having less and less and being down in the single digits of folks that are leaving on their trek up to Katahdin. So, but who's out there on the trail right now? Well, we got uh, OG, he is past the quarter mile mark. So that is awesome to see him do that. And he says he's gonna be passing the 600 mile mark. He finally got fed by Fresh Ground and the Leapfrog Cafe. So OG is from my hometown. So glad those two got together out there on the trail, but he is enjoying the trail. Jeff and Maya, they are on their way to Waynesboro. And they said the trail where they're at's pretty much been cleared of blowdown since their last update. Uh, they are thankful that the volunteers are out there. Just want to give them a shout out for getting out there and maintaining the trails. They did stop at the Devil's Backbone uh, Brewery, and uh, which is at mile marker 845, and hitched a ride about five miles in there to Roseland, Virginia. And they're glad they stopped there because they let you camp there at that brewery. They also have hot showers for hikers. So that's a really neat place to go. Neat, great food, good uh, adult beverages there. And so they were glad they went. They said that the community around there is very aware of hikers. And they had a trail angel, uh, Miss Linda, who gave them a ride uh, in there to the brewery. So that's awesome to hear from them. Yolo, he has made it to Parisburg, Virginia. Uh, for Virginia, and he said that danger is off the trail with a broken toe and a torn ligament in the knee. Ow! So that may be something that is permanent, at least for this year. Uh, Patriarch, he's out of the Smokies, and he wanted to thank the Carolina Trail Club maintenance crews for doing such a good job of clearing the trails in there. Made it to Hot Springs. He said he passed no rush, which is possibly the last Sobo, and sends in this video. Here's uh, No Rush with the challenge. Hey, Ramdino, I've heard all about you, but never been able to find uh, what it is you do on YouTube. But I have a challenge. There are those heading uh, north who say that there are other 22 slow bows. $100 to the person that's slower than I am, having started <laughs> on 9 uh, July, and I'm still doing it. <laughs> Cheers. So I'm not exactly sure what slodge is. Is it a thing? Is it a verb? Uh, participle, I'm not sure what that is, but it doesn't matter. I think No Rush, with his attitude and just the way he looks, I think he's going to make it no problem. Even if he's the last one there, last one to finish their hike wins, right? Uh, Blue has reached Newfound Gap and is pushing on. Uh, he stopped into Pigeon Forge, spent some time with family there, and said the trail is providing some great experiences. Tupac and Mama Nita, they have made it through the Rhone, and they are on their way to Hampton. Uh, they indicated that the Overmountain Shelter is still there, as, it, as has everybody that has passed through there. So they haven't turned the ATC and the National Forest Service and the Trail Club there have not pushed it over just yet. Uh, but they did say that Mama Nita fell, hit her head, and that's why she's got this bruising under her eyes. So typically, if you fall and hit your head that hard, hard enough for the blood to be, even if it's subcutaneous blood, for it to drain down into your eyes like that, and usually around the bottom of your eyes is where it pulls and manifests itself as a bruise, that is a concussion. So hopefully everything's going to be good with her. Uh, please be careful, folks, when you get out there. Uh, know your percussion, uh, concussion uh, protocols. Know what they are. Uh, if you hit your head really hard, you may think you're okay, but you need to maybe go get checked out somewhere because uh, something could uh, come back and bite you later on, and we just don't want that. Scooby-Doo, Scooby he is on trail and is around Dick's Creek Gap, and he is making a run for the border. 
Boston has made it as far as the Aldi Murphy Memorial. So he said the bridge there at Craig Creek is perfectly ser serviceable. The ATC has put out that it's closed um, and they are going to look at rebuilding it. But right now uh, it hasn't been rebuilt. going to be a while for that happens. So they're indicating you can either forward uh, the creek there 100 yards away or you can take a uh, road walk which misses a nice ridge and the Audie Murphy Memorial uh, so uh, I'm not telling you to cross over that bridge I wouldn't dare say cross over bridge if somebody else has said that but Boston says that it was perfectly serviceable that's his story and he is sticking to it and by the way I, I mentioned the Audie Mo Murphy Memorial last week I, I should have mentioned who Audie Murphy was. So Audie Murphy was the most decorated person soldier from World War II. So he won the Congressional Medal of Honor, uh, three Purple Hearts, uh, just all, all kinds of uh, Legion of Merit, all kinds of awards uh, from other countries as well where he fought. So he was a true American hero. He went on to become a musician and an actor. Uh, but uh, but Audie Murphy, that's who he was, and why there's a memorial there for, for him, he was from Texas, but he was a private pilot and apparently crashed his plane into the mountain near where that memorial is. Uh, so that's why we have the memorial there. But anyway, that's the story of Audie Murphy. Pell Ryder, he has made it to the 100-mile mark and is uh, continuing the mission. Stretch is in Fontana and taking a zero and then heading into the Smokies. Cup of tea, popcorn, and hold fast. They are north of Chest Up Knob Shelter and sent a photo of crossing Lick Creek where a new bridge is scheduled to be installed. Got a photo from another hiker on a high water day. So that was a bridge I told you about last week or maybe the week before that where they do have plans uh, and it is being funded by this one of the billion dollar government programs that has uh, been out there uh, lately that was that was passed and but it's not been started on yet and so uh, there's a rope there that can help you get across that but in any case uh, they are across that and of course north of Chestnut Knob Shelter when you get to Chestnut Knob Shelter if you hadn't got there yet that's a really great place to spend the night even if you tent because you look down into Burke's Garden sunset sunrise awesome place at the top of a hill and Burke's Garden is called the Thumbprint of God. So it's just a really neat place. Uh, it's uh, basically, uh, it's not a caldera. Uh, caldera is from a volcano that collapsed and the interior sunk down. But it is from where limestone was uh, just eaten away by uh, water erosion underneath. And so it collapsed down uh, is what my understanding of the history is. But it is really neat to look down in there. Uh, Frodo and the ring, they have made it past the goats above Parisburg, who followed them down the trail for about a quarter mile. So these are those feral goats that are out there. Uh, they are pretty friendly. They might butt you in the head, uh, particularly if you've been down to take a picture of them. But so far, I've had uh, no, uh, nothing from anybody back, talking about any injuries beasts. with the goats back, up there above back. Parisburg. But I have had a lot of people back. tell me, this year that they've run into those goats. McDuck and the Oki and Jeff from Kansas, they have crossed the 400 mile mark and left North Carolina for good. So they had a wonderful stay at the refuge hostel with Robert and April and said they are two of the nicest and most helpful people they have met on the trail. They're taking a zero for Easter services and uh, they also confirm that the Overmountain Shelter is still intact this week. Chris from AKA the girls who threw hike during the COVID years 21, 22 is hiking solo this year and she is somewhere around Franklin. Yard sale from the lookout hostel reported seeing uh, early nobos Anita and Sidewinder on the trail in Massachusetts and also said they hosted Cadillac, Crazy Blazer and Topo and we've been reporting on Topo here lately. Rock and roll, he's made it to Swan Terra Gap. He's doing a flip flops of Swan Terra Gap up north. Patrick, Amy, and Gippy, who is now shown, has made it to Neil Gap. Smoke is in Franklin. Oz has made it through the Rhone, and he took a little breather there at the station at 19E. I don't know if he got up there and, and started playing croaky or karaoke or however y'all call it. I don't know if he did that or not, but that would have been pretty funny to see that. Wedge has made it over 500 miles. Gadget has made it to Fontana Dam and is now in the Smokies and is currently hiking with Peanut and Lizard. 
Ross08, he has made it to Hot Springs. Cobweb Bros, Snapshot, Mountain Crusher, and Lucky have made it to Clingman's Dome. That was this past weekend when all the rain hit them, but they actually had a, a, an opportunity there where the clouds parted. They went up there and had a great picture from Clingman's Dome, and then as soon as they got back down from the tower, uh, the bottom fell out and the clouds opened up again. So that was pretty cool for that to, uh, them to have that opportunity. Marshall got the trail name of Up Down, and he's with Cheesecake Kate and Agile on the trail, and they're somewhere around Dix Creek heading into North Carolina. Hiram Hikes, he's made it to the Quarterway Tree and had to stay at the Long Neck Lair, I think it's called. That's where the, uh, what are those things called? I can't remember what they're called now. My wife wanted us to get one, and we were, after touring a farm, we realized that we did not want one. Uh, but they're pretty, pretty neat looking animals. But anyway, that's where they're at. They are in Adkins. Stinger, he's north of Parisburg with Caps and Kodiak after zero, and they are heading on to Delville. Bluehead and the Happy Camp Airs, they are coming in to the Triple Crown. Triple Crown, of course, is in Virginia. It's about 21 miles, starts with Dragon's Tooth, uh, then goes to uh, McAfee Knob, and then continues on uh, through Tinker Cliffs before it gets somewhere around Delville. Uh, DJ has made it to the knock, and he is a type 1 diabetic. So we had some discussion last week about type 1 diabetes. He says the blowdowns are everywhere across the trail in North Carolina, and he had one had a bad group in the trees right past the Cold Spring shelter with no way around other than really getting off the trail. Uh, he said the climb down in the knock even was a little difficult, uh, or not a climb down. He said climb down, but he means a descent down into it because of some blowdowns that were on there and so he said even that was uh tough to navigate so those are all the folks that have reported that are uh reported to me most of those are on my uh, hiker support list so a couple things if you want to be on the hiker support list and that's a list where everybody leaves uh, that wants to have people uh, track them through their uh, social media and leave comments and stuff that is down below, the description to that is down below. And if you're a through hiker, the description to put yourself on that list is down below as well. We've got somewhere around 245 through hikers on there. So if you want to find a through hiker to support, that's the place to go and support them in whatever way you'd like to support them. Definitely through comments and just keeping them pumped up all the way throughout the course of their hike. Um, we do have some folks that are on the list that are starting this upcoming week. We got Wally, Cindy Wyatt Briley, Morgan Scar, Jamie White, Sarah Penny, CP, Brandon Meyer, and the BFG or, str or Strings is what he, Brian's going to go by. So those are the folks that are starting and won't be too much longer. All our folks from the support list will will be uh, already on trail. Did have some folks that get off the trail. Pat Adams had uh, to get off trail due to high blood sugar levels. So he's a diabetic. Uh, he thought that he could, uh, you know, because of all the exercise he was getting, that he could eat the breakfast bars and the trail bars and stuff. But uh, his levels kept going up, and they were like going as high as 186. And so he was not going to be able to keep them down. And so his, uh, his diabetes did not require injections, but it did require pills. And so it just, unfortunately, the intake from the bars and the sugar was just too much. Uh, so like I said, we talked about that last week. We had um, a subscriber or a viewer call in or write in and ask how people that um, have, are insulin dependent how they hike the trails, particularly on long distance trails. And so a lot of you folks responded out there. Greatly appreciate that. We had uh, Hiking for Snickers, Hokulele, Options T1D Backpacker. They all wrote in and they said, and then there was a couple others too, but they all said they use the Frio cooling wallet. So apparently this is some type of cooling wallet. It's available on Amazon. I'll link, leave a link down below. But apparently it's what you basically do it, it keeps your insulin at the proper temperature that it needs to be for storage. So these folks are using the pins that they stick themselves with uh, and you could put, it looks like two pins in there, uh, but they have some cases that have even more, but basically you put it in water and it doesn't have to be like freezing water and it activates something, a gel or something in it and it keeps your insulin at the proper temperature to where you can carry it and so just ever so often 
uh, and I'm not sure, but it, I mean, it's, it's not like every hour. It's like 24 hours or 48 hours, something like that. It will keep your insulin cool like it's supposed to be. So that right there is awesome that di diabetics that are insulin dependent can utilize that, have a tool like that, piece of gear to take out there on trail to help them fulfill their dreams. So that's awesome. Uh, Joseph Caldwell, he got his trail name of Pack Mule, and he is off currently, but he plans to get back on sometime around mid-April. So like I said before, we got 200 and 2,034 have stepped off, and just to give you an idea of how many folks had stepped off by this time last year, uh, we had 2,664 had stepped off. So that's somewhere around, round numbers, 400 folks less this year stepped off than they did last year. So we have still increased registrations from last week. Uh, we got 46 more Nobos have registered. Uh, looks like we lost about four flip floppers. So uh, if you register and decide you're not gonna be taking, the, uh, taking your hike, then you can uh, delete your registration and I, recommend, I would like recommend that you do that. The ATC wants you to do that. Helps with the data, so we did lose uh, looks like four flip-floppers uh, decided they were not going to do it this year and deleted their registration. We did gain 11 more Sobo. Uh, so we are up the, now to 3,251. So that's 53 more hikers uh, than we had uh, last week. So we do have a couple news going on out there. Uh, before we get to that, I want to thank Realtree. Realtree uh, became a new Patreon member. Uh, this over this past week, so thanks a lot, Realtree, for believing in what I do here and and believing in in how I help the hiker community. Uh, the, the the Patreons and the folks that give me uh, a, a, a super thanks and and whatever contribution you want to make, there's other ways you can do that. Really help me get the word out there to the to the hiker community and and help me to support the hiker community, and that's what this channel is all about. And of course, your comments and your Thanks, just your regular thumbs up and your uh, subscriptions, all those help the channel as well. So I'd encourage you to, whatever way you'd like to do that, all those links uh, are down below where you can go and find those. If you want to be a Patreon member or support the channel otherwise, Super Thanks, of course, is directly underneath this video. So thanks a lot, Realtree, and thanks for those people that have done that. Uh, greatly appreciate that. So the news, of course, Trail Days is coming up in Damascus. That's May 19th through the 21st. That is a gathering of through hikers past and really a gathering of the hiker community in general. So you don't have to be a through hiker to go there. But you will see tons of through hikers from generations there from many, many years. And you'll see a huge parade of them broken up by each year they through hike. So it's really neat experience. If you've never been and just want to experience the hiker community uh, at its best, I would recommend that you go there to that. Uh, it's just really a neat time. Uh, come along and I'll be there. May have some through hikers from past, not going to mention their names, that will be joining us, but we'll be in a big red pop-up uh, where we normally are right down there in the middle of the family area that's down there on the ball field. So we're not back in the woods, in the woods uh, where it's a less family area. Uh, but the family area is, uh, there's still some adult beverages that happen there. And, you know, if you happen to bring uh, one or three by, uh, the big red tent there in the middle, then by all means, we'll sit down uh, and have a conversation with you. We'll have a conversation with you, obviously, if you don't either. But come on, say hey, love to meet you. And if you see me out walking around, please come up and speak with me. I always enjoy talking to folks out there in the hiker community. And that's May 19th through the 21st. We have had our first bear report. So I had a couple folks uh, sent in a bear there, and that's at the Pex Corner Shelter. So uh, the bear has become acclimated and is getting close. Uh, Roll Tide, who is our Smoky correspondent and a ridge runner through there, uh, reported this in as well and verified that. And he saw it came in while he was trying to clean out the privy. Uh, there was a hiker that had left a gear in there and food wrappers and all kind of stuff there. And, and that's what causes these bears to come in. And they get acclimated to humans and, and they are very much driven by 
the smell of food, and particularly when people leave wrappers and stuff around. And so that's what happens here. Roll Tide did say that he says the thu hikers coming through there have been great. They really appreciate what he's doing and the other trail uh, uh, folks are doing through there. Uh, and he did indicate, though, that this is not indicative of a foo hiker. He feels like this was a day hike, or not a day hiker, but an overnight section hiker or something like that. Uh, and so obviously these people are not practicing, leave no trace like foo hikers are. And the, what happens is the bear usually suffer because they come in, they get food, uh, they get steel food bags, they get where they come in and they're not afraid of humans, they won't leave, and eventually they have to be uh, captured and taken away. Sometimes they even have to be euthanized, especially if there's an attack that happens. So please don't do that because a, a bear that is used to human beings is, is headed to be a dead bear, and we don't want that out there. Also had a bear report from the Carter Gap Shelter. Uh, so that's the first one I've heard this year, but that is a, uh, a typical place where uh, we get reports on bears. He uh, got into some bags there and he also tried to break into a, a bear vault. Wasn't successful, but he surely made a big gouge in it. So uh, he probably got scared off. Uh, they indicated that they found the uh, pile of food from the bear bags. Uh, couple hundred yards away as well as the bear vault there so they will carry them off noro season is just around the corner so if you don't want what the norovirus is this is what you'll look like if you get the norovirus we don't want you to look like that with the norovirus so norovirus comes around because people are sharing food you know they're not hygienic they're not washing their hands like they should uh, and you know they're in shelters, they're in close proximity, or hostels that get really packed when the bubble comes through. So that is coming. If you know the norovirus out there and you know of an outbreak or know where it's been hit, let me know so that I can let hikers know that are coming uh, after you. I'm still planning to get out there on the trail April 27th. April 22nd. I can't talk today for some reason. Oh. It's windy and uh, everything's rattling above me. So uh, I've always preached about dead man. So anyway, uh, still trying to plan to get out there April 22nd. Be starting at McAfee Knob. So anybody that wants to come with me, uh, more than welcome to do that. Probably be doing about 30 or 40 miles. Uh, let's call it 35 miles, something like that. Uh, but looking forward to getting out there. Planning on it, I do. My chickens have got to get moved sometime. And I'm still working on the coop, so the chickens uh, are now getting to the point where we can't keep them in the house no more than another week or so. So it's going to be touch and go, and it rains every freaking weekend when I'm away from the Matrix and got a chance to work on uh, the coop. So uh, it's going to be touch and go, but I'm going. Uh, I'm really looking forward. I need to get some trail time out there, uh, and looking forward to that. Well, he is risen. That's all I got this week. As always, appreciate you, and we'll see you out here. Alpacas, that's what they called. I knew I'd think of it before I got. See you next week, y'all. Bye-bye.